Hi there, it's Julie joining you on this spring extravaganza today and I'm going to show you how I created this view from a riverbank card using a selection of Lavinia Elements inks, Versafine Clair along with some gel pens and Posca pens. So let's get started. I'm going to use Multifarious card and just dab my ink in three different inks, it doesn't really matter which ones you choose but these are the ones I used. Just add a splodge of three different ones onto my craft mat and give them a good spritz with water. Now I'm just going to pull my card through the inks making sure I've covered each of the white areas. There you are, just missed one there. You don't want to do this too many times otherwise you'll end up with it more of a muddy collection. Right, give my back a quick wipe and with a clean corner of my tissue I'm going to dab the excess off of my card before coming in with a heat gun. You want to make sure this is nice and dry before you stamp onto it because it can affect how the image comes out. Right, that's that done. I'm going to use Fantasy here, yeah, just work out where I want it to come, where I'm going to need the horizon to be. Now I'm just using a watercolour pencil to draw that in. I've had these in my pot for years. Now usually I would mask off the top and use a smoothie and my ink pad to create the water. It doesn't hurt to try something new. Just added a few squiggles to the edge as well to add depth of colour to my card. With a wet brush, just softening all the lines and hopefully we'll be able to see where the sky ends and the horizon begins. Yep, that's it. Just give it a quick dry. Right, let's work out where I'm going to put my boat. I'm going to say it sits just so you can see the horizon behind it. And firm on my block and I'm going to ink it up using the Versafine Clair Nocturne. Make sure you give a nice good covering to the image. Tap it on well all over. I think that's it. Give it a nice firm press. Don't be in too much of a hurry. You want to make sure that all the ink transfers onto the card. All right, shall I lift it up? Good. That's a, such a beautiful image. You'll see that I just added a stack of copy paper below before I stamped, just because of the cushioning and helps getting a nice clean image. Now I'm just added a little tiny spritz of water into the lid of my ink pad and picking up the excess ink from the lid and using it to colour up my boat. There you are. I'm just adding more depth of colour to the base of the boat where it hits the water. This just gives the image more dimension. Yep. Obviously 
if you use more water the colour will be more diluted so pick up the areas with less water to add the deeper base to the boat. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. I also want to add a little bit more depth between the buttons because they would be casting a shadow. So that area needs to be just a little bit darker as well. Dabbing the tissue and probably back on. Protect my lovely inks. I want to create a tree line along the horizon. I'll show you how I do that. I'm using the small fairy fir tree, linking it up with Shady Lane, my first fine clear ink, and then with a scrap of paper, I'm just lifting like the first stamping off just half of the stamp before placing it on the horizon and giving it a good press. Oops. Hope you can see the bottom half of the image is slightly fainter and it just gives the illusion of the reflection on the water. I'm just going to do the same on the other side. Work out which way you want it to turn out on the water so you know which half to take the first stamping off of with your scrap of paper. Actually I'm thinking I might mask off that boat because I think I'd like the tree line to come in a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp it onto a scrap of paper. Just cut out the area that I'm going to want to mask. You can do this on a post-it note if you want, want to make sure it's nice and secure on the card. Going to be really careful. I'm not going to be too bothered about the other part of the image. Just the left hand side of the coat. Almost there. Right, so I'm going to place that over the edge of the boat before I stamp it. Oh, maybe I should ink it up again. I'm just going to go for it. Hopefully be able to see how it comes out. I oh, missed a tiny little bit there but what I'm going to do next is just use a black watercolour pencil, a little bit of glitter stuck on there. And what I'm going to do is draw in where I want the illusion of a river bank to be. I'll draw a thin line down the centre and then with a wet brush I'll soften the line And bring it down so you can see how it's created almost a reflection in the water oh, I'm really happy with that I, I might just add a little bit of shadowing where the boat hits the water as well with my black pencil not too much just a tiny little bit of Tiny little thin line and then the wet brush to soften it. Before coming in with my ink and a wet brush and colouring in my buttons.
and then the leaves. I used to just dab the ink onto my craft mat, but I only needed a tiny little bit for these leaves. It's less wasteful to just pick it up from the inside of the lid, unless it's for a larger area, in which case I would just do it on the mat. Give it up. The Elements ink pads are really good for this. Right, just colour up the flower. I think I use the pink again for that. say pink. I think it's mulberry this one. Now I'm going to use the bellflower vine at the top of my card as if it's overhanging the river bank. And you can see the boat in the distance. So I'll out positioning. firm press. You can see I've still got a stack of paper underneath. Just there. Firm press. And then back to colouring it in with the elements. As you can see I've sped up the film because it takes me such a long time to colour in. But I'm sure I'm not the only one. Just so indecisive. But it's worth taking your time over. Now I want to add a bit more colour to the water, so I'll just put some colour onto my mat. I'll add some blue ink to my mat, spritz it with some water. I'm going to come in with a nice brush and add to it. Now I know this is an aqua brush and I could just use the water within the reservoir, but I never get around to emptying them after and forget. So I've just spritzed onto the mat. Oh, like how that's looking. Right, I'm just going to give it a quick blast with my heat gun before I get onto the bank. Let me show you how I create it. I'm using the Silhouette Grass Stamp. I love this stamp. This is my new go-to stamp. I'm going to gradually build up the colour and the shape of the bank I'm using a selection of green and then a little bit of black ink. Starting with Shady Lane. I'm doing first, second and third generation stamping until I get the outline that I'm happy with. Now obviously the base of the stamp is a thick solid line but you'll gradually lose this. once you've gone back in with various colours. A little bit of black to the foreground as well. 
just makes the card more dimensional. See it gradually building up and also adding a little bit of shadowing to the grass. Now this is where you begin to lose the lines. I'm going in with my elements and a smoothie. Just going right the way over that stamped area, gradually softening any more solid areas. I do hope this makes sense. Going back in with the stamp and this time I'm using Verdant, is it called Verdant in the Versavine Claire? Adding some lighter colour amongst the grass. Now I think I'm going to come back in with Truffle this time on my brush because I can still see just a few areas if it's a solid line hopefully with the brown it will just soften it a little bit more there you go that looks right and i'm happy with the bottom of my card i'm going to go back in and add a bit more interest to the top half and using the foliage set, there's a couple of dangly vines, and this is the larger of the two. I'll get myself off a little mask. Might need that. I'm just going to stamp it in the top in some areas. In other areas, I might just mask it off so that it looks like it comes from the trails of the vine rather than from the very top of the card. By adding the first and second generation stamping, it just adds dimension and brings the stamping either into the foreground or into the, the background. And then by adding a few in black, it adds even more dimension. Don't be afraid to use black. It does add more interest, I find. Now I'm just coming in with my Sakura jelly roll pens and add in a little bit of sparkle to some of the areas and then I'm also going to add a few highlights with my white Posca pen. It's like the light's catching the vine. I'm also going to add a few ripples to the water. I'm also going to add a few daisies. Oops, a little bit of a blob there, I must have pushed it a bit too hard. Soon rescued though with a little dab of the finger. I'm hoping you can, or that you can't hear how windy it is today again. I was going to record this last week, but it was so windy. 
I didn't even fancy venturing out to the crafty cabin. Right, I'm going back in now and adding a bit of colour to the, around the edge of my card. I should have done this straight off of the mat. I don't know why I didn't move the paper out of the way because you get much more smoother blend when it's off of the mat rather than from the paper. Now I we'll have to rescue that dob there. I think what I'll do is I'll come back in with the small fairy fir tree and the shady lane. I'm just going to stamp that over that area. Yeah. Fir tree to the rescue. I'll do a little bit on the other side as well to balance it out. Actually, I'm going to do a second stamp in and add the reflection in the water. There we are. And that's my card done. Just to give you a little close up of how that grass stamp looks when it's stamped in the different colours at the water's edge. I hope you like it. Let me know if you give this a try. Happy crafting!